Solving general chemistry problems. Electrochemistry. All chemical reactions are driven by the rearrangement of the electrons around the atoms making up the molecules. As a chemical reaction event occurs, the electrons move away from some nuclei and move closer to others. In a perfectly covalent bond, such as would be found in a homonuclear diatomic molecule such as H2, the electron distribution is perfectly balanced between the two atoms but in any other molecule, the distribution will be asymmetric. In some cases, the differences will be small, and in others it will be quite large. In molecules where the difference is small, we think of these bonds as being mostly covalent. At the other extreme, we think of them as being mostly ionic. When molecules are broken up into ions, cations and anions, then some electrons have completely shifted from one atom to another. Keeping track of these electrons is key to understanding the structure and bonding of molecules as well as chemical reactivity, which is all about changes to their structure and bonding. Two methods have been developed to keep track of electrons in molecules. Formal charge and oxidation number. We'll use the phrases oxidation number and oxidation state interchangeably. Formal charge models tend to emphasize the covalent nature of bonds and is used in forming and assessing Lewis structures to determine molecular structure. On the other hand, oxidation number tends to emphasize ionic bonding character, envisioning the transfer of electrons between atoms. Such reactions are called redox reactions. Electrochemistry deals with reactions involving the transfer of electrons, and as such, assigning oxidation states to atoms and molecules is most appropriate. Consider the water molecule. Electrochemists have learned that electrons shift towards the oxygen atom and away from the hydrogen atoms. The oxygen end of the molecule is partially negatively charged while the hydrogen end is partially positively charged. The charge redistribution happens because of the details of the way electrons move around hydrogen and oxygen atoms. The molecule is more stable when they move in this way. The shift in charge is readily measured experimentally. The molecule's dipole moment is well known. Scientists have tried to develop a measure of an atom's propensity to attract electrons. This property has been called electronegativity. An atom with a greater electronegativity tends to attract electrons more than those with a smaller amount. One speaks of electronegative and electropositive atoms. The greater the difference in electronegativity between two atoms, the greater will be the shift in electron distribution and the bond between them will become more ionic. Trends in electronegativity arise in the periodic table of the elements. General chemistry students need to know the main trends. Electronegativity tends to increase as you move left to right across the table and as you move from the bottom to the top. Again, this is a tendency. You may find exceptions. The noble gases do not follow this trend. The upper atoms, helium and neon, are hardly electronegative at all. But the general trend is that the lowest electronegativity is at the bottom of the alkali metals around cesium and it is highest at the top of the halogens around fluorine. Oxygen, which is right next to fluorine, has the second largest electronegativity after fluorine. A set of general rules have been developed to help students assign oxidation numbers to atoms in molecules. Now remember, oxidation number or oxidation state are the same thing. We tend to use them interchangeably. However, charge and oxidation state are two different properties. They may sometimes be equal, as in the case of a free atom, but they are not the same property. Additionally, assigning an oxidation state is just an electron bookkeeping exercise. You need not infer that the electrons have completely shifted between atoms, as you might conclude from looking at their oxidation states. Also, oxidation states are commonly integers, but they can be fractional. This is a bookkeeping exercise, and sometimes a charge differential is apportioned between several atoms, producing a, producing a fractional oxidation number. Now, I will write an atom's oxidation number above it. This is not an official convention. There is none as far as I know. We just need to keep track of oxidation numbers, and writing them above each atom is a reasonable way to do it. Here are the rules. Atoms in their elemental forms have an oxidation state of zero. Any free, uncharged atom has an oxidation state of zero. As an example, we see lithium and arsenic in their elemental neutral forms. For an ionized atom, either an anion or a cation, its oxidation state is equal to its charge. 
As an example, we have sodium as a 1 plus charged ion. Its oxidation number is also plus 1. And sulfur is shown as its common 2 minus charged ion. Its oxidation number is therefore minus 2. In a molecule, the sum of all oxidation states must equal the overall charge. Here is the hydrogen sulfide molecule. We will see in the following rules that the H atoms are assigned an oxidation number of plus 1 and the sulfur will be minus 2. Two H atoms with a plus 1 mean that two electrons are imagined to have left them, one each, and the sulfur must therefore pick them up and have an assigned oxidation number of minus 2. We then have 2 times plus 1 plus a minus 2 equals 0, which is the charge of this neutral molecule. By contrast, the carbonate ion has a charge of minus 2. We assign an oxidation number of minus 2 to the oxygen atoms and plus 4 to the carbon atom. We have plus 4 plus 3 times a minus 2, which equals minus 2, the charge on the ion. In compounds, group 1 metals, the alkali metals, have an oxidation state of plus 1. The single valence electron is readily given up to the other atoms. In compounds, group 2 metals, alkaline earth metals, have an oxidation state of plus 2. In compounds, group 17 elements, the halogens, have an oxidation state of minus 1. Picking up another electron completes their octet and makes them very stable. In compounds, group 16 elements, the chalcogenides, the group under oxygen, usually have an oxidation state of minus 2. However, below oxygen, they can also be regularly found with plus 2, plus 4, and plus 6 oxidation states. In compounds, group 15 elements, the pnictides, the group under nitrogen, usually have an oxidation state of minus 3 when reduced. They can, however, be found with plus 3 and even plus 5 oxidation states. In compounds, group 14 elements, the carbon group, have plus 4 and plus 2 oxidation states possible. Anionic-like species can also be formed, usually as a minus 4 state. In compounds, group 13 elements, the boron group, form plus 3 states with atoms near the top, also plus 2 near the middle, and plus 1 for the middle and bottom elements. In compounds, hydrogen is usually plus 1, but can be minus 1 when combined with metals, forming hydrides. Transition elements commonly have multiple oxidation states available. The structure of each individual molecule will make it clear. They are generally all positive oxidation states, loss of electrons. As you see, main group elements, which are those in groups 13 through 17, often assume oxidation states that can vary from positive to negative, from gaining the number of electrons to complete their octet, or by losing electrons up to the number of valence electrons. This all depends upon the electronegativity of the other atoms in the molecule being considered. Here are some special yet important cases for you to remember. Peroxides, molecules with two oxygen atoms bound together. Each atom has an oxidation state of minus one. Superoxides, molecules such as KO2, have an oxidation number of minus one half assigned to each, each oxygen atom. Oxygen has a negative oxidation number, except when bound in a molecule to fluorine. Then it becomes positive, as F has the largest electronegativity. In interhalogen compounds, the halogen lower in the group carries a positive oxidation number. Here are some examples. H2O. As in most molecules, look first at oxygen. It is almost always minus 2, unless one of the exceptions mentioned above, peroxide, superoxide, or oxyfluoro compounds. The molecule carries no charge, so the oxidation states of the hydrogen atoms must sum with the minus 2 to equal 0. An oxidation state of plus 1 for each H atom satisfies this completely. P4. Now, this is a multi-atom molecule, to be sure, but it is also elemental, and as such, each of the four atoms has an oxidation state of 0. NH3, ammonia. The H atoms like to be plus 1, so the nitrogen must be minus 3. This would complete its octet, since it has 5 valence electrons, and would explain the molecule's stability. NF3, by contrast with ammonia, the F atoms like to be minus 1, so the nitrogen must be plus 3 in this case. The nitrogen loses its 3 2p valence electrons. Al2O3. Here we look first to the oxygen atoms and assign them as minus 2. There are three of them. And since the molecule is neutral, charge is 0, we need to find plus 6 to balance them. Since there are two aluminum atoms, we can assign a plus 3 oxidation state to each of them to achieve this balance. 
And since aluminum is in group 13 and has three valence electrons, this makes perfect sense. MnO. Manganese oxide will have minus two on the oxygen and therefore plus two on the manganese. MnO2. Manganese dioxide will have minus two on each oxygen and therefore it needs a plus four on the manganese. MnO4 minus. Well, this is the permanganate ion. It has an overall charge of minus one. Assign minus two to each ox oxygen atom. There are four of them, so that makes for minus eight. The ion has a minus one charge overall, so we assign plus seven to the manganese ion. These three examples show how a transition metal can have various oxidation states. FES, sulfur in these situations would take on an oxidation state of minus two. It has a much larger electronegativity than iron. Hence, iron must be plus two. Iron's common oxidation states are plus two or plus three. Fe2O3, oxygen will be minus two. With the three oxygen atoms, that makes for minus six, which must be balanced by the two iron atoms. So they must be plus three in oxidation state. Fe3O4. Now, here is a tricky one. This substance is called magnetite. The four oxygen atoms will again be minus two, each for a total of minus eight. The three iron atoms must deliver plus eight to balance. The oxidation state of each one must be plus eight over three or plus 2.667. Now, this is a valid answer. Remember to just keeping track of electrons and not suggesting any actual transfer of charge. Another response could be that two Fe atoms are assigned plus three and the third is plus two. This would also work. Both answers are correct. We have tracked all of the electrons. Become familiar with these rules and come to appreciate how they arise out of the periodic table. You should be able to assign oxidation numbers to all of the molecules we will encounter. Your strategy? Look for elements at the extremes of electronegativity, fluorine and other halogens, oxygen, alkali metals, alkaline earths. Look for hydrogen, minus one with a metal, plus one otherwise. Adjust other oxidation states so as to add up to the charge on the molecule, which would be zero or an ion. Learn the, ra learn the range of possible values for the elements in the main group. Carbon group with four valence electrons can go from minus four to plus four. Nitrogen group, the nictides, which have five valence electrons can go from minus three to plus five. The chalcogenides below oxygen, that is starting with sulfur, can go from minus two to plus six. And note that the transition elements usually have multiple positive oxidation states. Know which are which. This skill will be essential in balancing chemical equations, something we will look at next.